my friends. It's the night before I leave the hospital. It's Monday night here in Jeonbury, Thailand, at Aikchal Hospital, where I had my sex reassignment surgery. My surgery was on Tuesday. It's Monday night. So I've been here for a week. I've been in this bed. I was in this bed for four days straight. In the last two days, I've been walking just a bit, going on short walks, building up the strength in my legs again, and um, trying not to fall over because I'm dizzy. But I, I feel now that I feel so blessed to have been able to have this experience. I, I know I'm lucky. I know I'm lucky and I just, I just thank the world. I thank the energies of the world, my family, my friends, all of you for all the support you've given me. The hospital staff here has been amazing. Here there are just a bunch of very lovely women that are always giving me what I need. You know, they give me my pills, they bring me my food, they clean the floors. Before I could shower on my own, they gave me baths. I feel like I have been so well taken care of since I've been here. And I am indescribably grateful. So for anybody out there who is considering SRS or GCS or whatever words you like to use for genital surgery, If you're getting yourself a vagina, you should come to Dr. Support. It's just, there's a, there's a very special place here. And um, I know that I didn't experience surgery with any other doctors, but I, uh, I feel in my heart that this is the best place to come. So, maybe now I should talk about some of the gory details. <laughs> Ouch. Moving a bit. Some positions still hurt. I, um, I have what's called packing inside my vagina. It's, uh, it's just a lot of cloth, basically a lot of, uh, sterile bandage that has been stuffed up the, in there at the very end of the operation and um, it's been keeping my vagina open th for this entire week. I, um, for the first few days, in addition to that, I've had this big bandage. I think I talked about the bandage in my last video, but I can't really remember, so forgive me if I repeat something. I had a big bandage between my legs that was sort of holding everything together and absorbing you know, the blood and the discharge from, from the healing, the healing flesh. Um, the outer bandage was removed on Saturday. So, um, I guess, and that's when I was able to shower. That was when I, I was able to stand up out of this bed and, um, and walk. So I suppose that I've been, uh, I've been walking for three days now. I still have a catheter for, for, for my urine. And um, tomorrow that comes out. And I will pee for the first time with my vagina, with, well, with my urethra, but pee as, a, as, as, pee as a woman with a vagina. I can't stand up to pee anymore. And... Uh, <laughs> The night before my surgery, I, I was having a bit of trouble sleeping, and I went into the toilet because I felt I had to pee, or I went to the bathroom, and I was like, 
I gotta pee. This is the last chance I have to do it standing up. And I did. And, um, it was, it was one way of saying goodbye to my penis. Um, when they took the bandage, the outer bandage off of my vagina, they gave me a mirror so I could look at it for the first time, and I just, I still can't really believe that, that I have this. It's, it's you know, it's a little bit swollen, and there's a little bit of discoloration because the, the, the flesh has been damaged and is healing and you know damaged in a proper way the flesh has to be damaged to be rearranged into a vagina right and there's stitches in there and even with all of these disgusting elements I have a vagina and I and it, and it looks like a real vagina and uh, and it's just gonna get it's just gonna get better it's just gonna it's just gonna change the way it looks is gonna change as it heals it's gonna look even more natural it's it's sensitive you know they have to put um, they have to put a fluid on it and they put a fluid and they put a cream on it three times a day and it's an antibacterial and, um, and basically sterilization. But the sensation that I have down there when the little cotton swab touches my clitoris and it's full of cold fluid, it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And um, I just feel so grateful. And I want uh, I want to share this with you. I wanted to share the story. I want to share how positive my experience has been because I think that uh, I mean I have to say that this is also hard as hell. You know I've been through a lot of shit living in Copenhagen and fighting political systems and and all the other experiences that I've talked about in my other videos this has been about a hundred times harder but, be, but I, I've lived through it I've lived through it with the help of support from my mother and help of support of the girls that are also here for their surgeries and the nurses and it's just, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. You know, in my older videos, I tell my story about, about my journey of gender as, uh, as, as one of confusion. Like, when I started my transition, I never, in my life, I never sat down and said to myself, I am a woman. I never said that until I, I was already putting hormones into my body. I feel like my journey of discovering my gender has been like walking through a mist that's taken 28 years to clear. The more I sit and think, and the more I t more talking that I do, um, and the more I try to think about my life, and I tr and I and the more I try to think about my transition, and and just my gender, like what is my gender now, you know, which is a topic for another video, I suppose. But the more I think about all of these things, the more memories. I can uncover. And one of the most recent memories that I feel I should share is, is that my, 
my, my life since puberty, my life since the age of 10, 11, 12, I have always fantasized about what it would be like to have a vagina. I have always wanted to know what that is like. I've wanted to know how it feels. I wanted to know what it's like on my body. And now I get to know. And it is satisfying my being, my soul, my core, whatever word you want to use. It is satisfying me to have this part of my body that I have just... I've, I've wanted it for longer than I realized that I wanted it. And now I don't have to think about it anymore. I don't, well, okay. I have to dilate and I have to take care of it. And I have to go through new struggles that women that are born women also go through. And I am happy to, to absorb those burdens into my life. Tomorrow I pee, and tomorrow the packing is taken out, and the doctor, Dr. Saporn, will teach me how to dilate my vagina. And dilating is something that I will do for the rest of my life. But for the next year, it's something that I have to do multiple times every day. So trust me. <laughs> it's like... It never ends. It just changes. But as it changes, every little tiny change gets better and better and better. And, 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 and knowing that I've been through this, this physical pain and the, the, the physical pain of, of, of my wound and the physical pain of being restrained to this bed. I lived through it, I'm stronger for it. And now, <laughs> I feel more than ever that I can do anything. And in the world we live in, I am a person that has not the same privileges as 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 many many people i cannot marry the woman i fall in love with uh there are some other personal issues that i would rather not discuss but um i can no longer <laughs> i have to have i had to have my testicles removed right it's part of this so my body is no longer capable of producing sperm to make a child. And knowing that, it's really heavy. And it makes me so happy that I, I put aside some of my genetic material so that someday, if I want to, I can have a child as long as I can find someone to bear my child. But I'm not going to worry about that right now because, <laughs> well, I don't even want kids for a while, but I know that I do someday. And for, for many transitioners, who come from an older generation, 
they've had their children and they feel regret that that they had their children and they had their family instead of of having their gender and it's like the same thing but reversed for me I feel happy that now I have my gender but in 20, 30, 40 years, you know, depending on, depending on what happens with, with the samples that I've, I've put away, they may fail. And um, I may feel a lot of regret that I didn't have a child first. So there's just... The life of a transgender person in the 21st century is one of hardship and struggle and loss and great pain but also it's one of incredible beauty and incredible humanity and um, there is not a single reason that any transgender person should ever feel shame about who they are. And I hope that by the time that it's my time to leave this world, that it can be better for all of us. Thank you, my friends, for sticking with me and for being there to listen when I needed to tell stories or rant and rave. But now it's time for me to go to sleep. And tomorrow morning, I get to start thinking really, really hard about the rest of my life. If I want to. I think I'm going to prefer to take it one day at a time for a while because I'm pretty exhausted. <laughs> but If I could bow, I would bow to the divine in you. Namaste. Namaste. Good night.